What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. Last time, we got to explore more of the effects of getting God Key early for everyone due to Beerus arriving so early in the story. As you could probably guess, everyone was so strong at this point that it kind of made things a cakewalk. Well, at least for the last part. This time, things are going to go very differently. We teased at the end of the last part that two things would go differently. For one, there would be a new person arriving from the future, as well as an old villain showing up once more. Here, there will be some severe consequences, you'll see as we continue with this video. For this part, let's set a like goal of 3000 likes, and once we hit that, I'll continue with another part to this series. Anyways, let's pick up from here. One day at Capsule Corp, everyone is just hanging around. Beerus and Whis are being their usual selves, being lazy and enjoying some food. They're outside at this point, and they notice something appear out of nowhere. It's some sort of weird vehicle, and it says Capsule Corp on the side. But the weird thing is it just teleported here out of nowhere. That's definitely something concerning, and Beerus has a feeling that he knows what it is. Especially because he asks Bulma and she has no idea what's going on. She, Trunks, and Vegeta run outside, and Trunks immediately knows what it is. He confirms that it is a time machine, but where did this come from? Of course, Beerus wouldn't be too happy to hear this, but they wait to see who's inside. Trunks thinks it could be from another timeline, but there is also another chance that it could be someone he was waiting for. This makes him hopeful, especially once he sees the time machine open. From the time machine, another version of Bulma steps out. Glad to see that everything's okay and seeing Trunks there, as well as her past self and Vegeta. She and Trunks have a nice reunion, as Vegeta and Bulma watch on kind of in confusion. Okay, future Trunks is one thing, but seeing another Bulma is kind of weird. And naturally, future Bulma has some questions herself as well. Like, who's the cat guy and the blue guy? So, you may be wondering how she got here, and let's explain. In the future timeline, she'd of course realize that Trunks hasn't returned. This would mean one of two things, either he got killed, or the preferable option, he's just stuck there. She doesn't know if things are going well in the past, and she debates going back there or not. It's kind of a gamble, it could be worse than this timeline, or it could be better and it just turns out that Trunks is stuck there. She begins working on another time machine, it will take some time, no pun intended, mainly to get fuel for it. And at this rate, she probably would want to escape. Since Trunks isn't there, the androids would continue destroying stuff, and eventually Cell would show up. With the androids still alive and Cell appearing, that means Cell would be able to absorb them and attain perfection. But Cell feels kind of empty here. There's no real challenge for him now. Almost all of Earth has been eradicated. There is a few survivors spread about, but they're definitely not strong enough to face him. By this time, Bulma could have already escaped. And it's good that she did. Once Cell realizes he's bored, he decides just to blow up Earth. He has no real use for it, and the only fun thing he can think of is going around the universe just destroying random planets for fun. I mean, what else is he going to do? So, the future timeline is pretty much lost, but thankfully, Bulma was able to escape so she doesn't die there. But naturally, this does raise another issue. Beerus is pretty angered by this. Another time machine means more timeline meddling. Trunks tells Beerus that she didn't know anything about the time travel law, so this is his fault if anything. If he went back to the future, they would have stopped time travel completely. And if Trunks had went to the future, she wouldn't have come to the past. Trunks tells Beerus that this is his fault if anything. Bulma had no other choice but to escape, and didn't know it was the wrong thing. Beerus doesn't take this opposition too well. He's tempted to destroy both of them, but he calms down and says he'll let it slide for this time. Trunks is kinda right, and to be fair, the future timeline is screwed according to Bulma. Clearly with future Bulma here, that's gonna throw a wrench in some things. The good side is, it means she escaped and lit. Also, Trunks is happy to see her, and vice versa. Having two Bulmas is definitely weird, but it's probably a good thing. Clearly both of them are very smart but it might make things weird for Vegeta. Does he technically have two wives now, or is it just two of the same person split up? Or are they even considered the same person? And how would each of the Bulmas feel about that? Unquestionably, it's gonna be awkward and weird, but having future Bulma here will definitely be good. We'll see more of that as the series continues onwards. She mentioned that some other androids showed up and somehow got the other two. She doesn't know much because she didn't want to go outside, but with a few drones, she was able to look around and see what was happening. So, they know that Cell pretty much won there, and Earth is probably destroyed by now for all they know. And the thing is, that's not the only Cell. There are three total. First, there's the one we'll refer to as Future Cell, the one that is currently in Trunks' timeline destroying everything. Next, there's the one that we'll simply call Cell. That's the one who traveled back in time to absorb the androids in this timeline. The one that already died here, and the one that fought Gohan in canon. And the only one in canon to actually become perfect. But, there is a third Cell. One that we can call Present Cell, the Cell from this timeline. His pod was actually never destroyed, and Jero's lab remained intact. I mentioned this in the last part. Present Cell is still being developed. In fact, his development's going even better than normal. The drones that Jero has are getting so much info that Cell's developing even faster. 
Not to mention, he has more DNA this time. Trunks is part of him, and probably the most scary of all, Beerus is part of him. Thankfully, the drones wouldn't pick up on Whis because he never really fought so they don't know his true power and decided he wasn't worth it. And frankly, if they did get his DNA, it would pretty much be over for everyone, so it's a way for me to nerf him. But they still do have Beerus' DNA after seeing all that power that Beerus showed off in his brief fights before. Not to mention, it has improved DNA from every other fighter. Trunks and Gohan are part of Cell, and all the data about God Key and stuff are part of him too. And with all this great data and great improvements in his power, the development of him would be sped up, and he'd probably wake up earlier on, years before he was intended to. Cell is definitely aware of his power when he wakes up and realizes how strong he is. He has one goal now though, seeking out the androids. He looks around the lab once he wakes up, and they're not there so he knows that they've been awoken before. But everything on Earth seems intact, so what happened with them? Either they somehow didn't go around destroying stuff which seems unlikely, or they got destroyed. And as Cell searches further, he realizes that this is the case. There's no androids for him to absorb, meaning he won't be able to attain perfection. But you know what? He thinks that it's kind of negligible. Even if he's only imperfect right now, he's just so strong already that he doesn't even need perfection. If anything, this makes it more fun and more challenging. If he were perfect, there'd be no fun in this. He's even not so sure now that he could have fun in this form because of how strong he is with all this data. But hey, he views it as a handicap, something to make fights more exciting. And as we know from Cell, excitement is what he wants. He just wants a good fight, and he's gonna go about it the fun way this time around. First, he actually needs to attract everyone towards him somehow. He floats up to the top of the mountain where Jero's lab is. Below him, he looks over multiple cities. He scans the vast landscape before him, and has the perfect idea of how to attract everyone to his location. Cell lifts a single hand up. He places a single finger on his thumb. He snaps it forward, flicking it. The single flick generates a massive shockwave, entirely flattening every city in front of him, as the shockwave continues around Earth multiple times. Excessive winds blow throughout the entire planet, and in the aftermath, everything within a few miles in front of Cell is completely destroyed, just from a single, unrestrained flick. This is more than enough to get everyone's attention. Of course, they know where this happened, and they feel the effects resulting from this. The group all rushes over to see what's going on. For miles, all they see is a flat wasteland but that divot converges at a point, and they see it's a mountain. They head towards the mountain, and on top of it, surely, Cell is standing there. It appears his signal worked, and now he could finally fight everyone. Great, another android, specifically another Cell? But this one, he's different. This isn't the one from the future, and it isn't the one that was killed before. They realize the true danger that they're facing. He has the DNA of everyone here, and all the new info that they could provide. Most shockingly of all, he has Beerus' DNA but he won't kill everyone just yet. He does want to have some fun. With Goku being one of his main targets, he faces Goku first, holding back heavily. And even with Blue, Goku's still having a tough time. Cell is both imperfect and suppressed, and he's keeping up easily with Goku. Vegeta jumps in to help, and Cell is still having an easy time. Trunks and Gohan jump in. And now Cell is actually feeling challenged, but all he has to do is ramp up his power a little bit, and he'll be easily able to fend everyone off. He's facing four Super Saiyan Blues at once, and is doing it relatively easily, not even being hurt at all. He enjoys this, he's actually having fun, and he wonders how long this can go on for. Okay, clearly their power isn't going to be enough here, so they try strategy. Goku begins teleporting around Cell at rapid speeds. And each time he teleports, he launches a small Kienzan. This actually trips Cell up a bit, he keeps getting hit by the small discs, but they're nothing. He keeps regenerating from them, and once he ramps up his power a bit more, he begins dodging them. And surprisingly, he begins teleporting too, even outpacing Goku. Goku teleports behind Cell, but then Cell teleports behind him, kicking Goku into a nearby cliff. Before Goku even hits the cliff, Cell teleports behind him again, kicking Goku back towards the other fighters. Injured, Goku stands up. The Saiyans and every other fighter alongside them all prepare to face Cell once more. They're already approaching their max. Goku even breaks out one of his secret techniques, Blue Kaioken. With how early he got a head start with Super Saiyan Blue, he'd likely have it by this point and at a pretty high level. But even at times 20, alongside the help from all the other fighters, it still isn't enough. They're all being pushed to their max. From another part of the planet, Beerus and Whis are watching. Normally, Beerus would be one to not get involved in fights. But this one actually kind of angers him and concerns him. Apparently, this Cell has the DNA of him. So not only is Cell strong in terms of his power, but what if he has access to godly techniques too? What if he can use the Hakai? This is definitely not something they want to play around with, specifically something that Beerus doesn't want to mess with. So, he and Whis fly over. Every person that can fight is there trying to face Cell. 
And now with everyone at their max power, Cell is stressing himself a bit, but he still overpowers everyone and does it pretty casually. Any techniques they can use, he can use. Any power that they can use, he has. God Key, that's part of him. Regeneration, he still has that. He's unlike anyone they've ever faced before, and this is the first time in a while that they've actually seen a challenge. Not only is he a strong opponent, but he's a strong opponent with Godly Key, just like all of them. During the fight, Cell forgot one of the most basic techniques that they have access to, as he's then blinded by Goku and Krillin. Of course, he has access to the Solar Flare too, and he can't believe he forgot about it. Now he's blinded and his senses are overwhelmed. He can't tell where anyone is, and he's waiting for the blindness to disappear. All the fighters gather together, charging attacks, and together, they all launch them at their maximum power. Cell is hit by a combined group attack, one with extreme power. But even so, it's not enough. Cell has some burn marks, and he's even missing an arm. That's the first time they actually got to injure him. But who cares, he regenerates and is back to his full health. On the bright side though, he doesn't have infinite energy, so they made some progress in wearing him out, but not much at all, it's pretty much negligible. After this blast occurs, then two other people show up, Beerus and Whis. They expect Whis to maybe fight, but he can't. That's not something an angel can do. But luckily, Beerus can help. He joins the battle as everyone fights Cell together. With Beerus, this is actually a tipping point. Everyone's amazed to actually see Beerus' strength. This is the first time he's ever been fighting seriously. Luckily, even though the drones did get his DNA and some data, they didn't get all the data. They've never seen Beerus at full power. Beerus admits, frankly, he was worried that everyone else was going to get above him somehow in terms of power, so occasionally he would be training himself. Beerus knows that he is above everyone in terms of strength, but this was a precaution. With so many Super Saiyan gods, and Super Saiyan blues for that matter, he didn't want a spot at the top to be taken. But even so, it's not like he's going to be incredibly stronger than he was before. The most shocking part is the fact that he's showing off his full power now. With Beerus now involved, the group is able to somewhat overpower Cell. And this really shows how strong he is here. But they don't want to drag this fight out. They don't know if there's a way to defeat him. And if there is, they want it to happen quickly. And Beerus of course recognizes the threat. If Cell keeps fighting, he's just going to grow stronger and stronger. He's got the potential of Saiyans, Hybrid Saiyans, and even Frieza's race in there. Not to mention Namekians and Beerus. If they're not careful, he'll win here, and he'll be able to destroy everything in the universe, possibly the multiverse. And thankfully, Beerus has the technique just for this. He begins sparring with Cell alone, and the two are actually matching each other. With a strong punch, Cell is sent flying down towards the ground. He sticks to landing, kneeling with one hand on the ground. He looks up and he sees Beerus descending towards him rapidly. Quickly, Beerus sticks one of his hands out, preparing a Hakai. Cell recognizes this, and to his surprise, Cell does the same, just in the nick of time. For a brief moment, Beerus actually feels this fear. But still, he continues with his plan. Cell jumps up towards Beerus, with his hand outstretched in the same way. At the same time, the two shout Hakai, at their maximum power, launching this godly technique. Immediately, the entire planet is illuminated in a purple glow, a Hakai countering a Hakai. The whole planet begins shaking. No, it's not the whole planet. It's felt on King Kai's planet, the sacred world of Kai's. New Namek, the entire galaxy feels it. Even Whis feels surprised. This will not end good. The entire universe is shaking. Two excessively strong characters use the same excessive technique at the same time. A cosmic shockwave is sent throughout space. The scale of this is incomprehensible. It almost feels as if everything is going to be destroyed. Feeling as time itself even stopped briefly. But thankfully, it doesn't. The purple glow disappears. The shockwave is gone. Everything is calm. Almost a little too calm. Everyone stands up, being knocked over from this attack. And a massive crater nearby, one that is miles deep, they see Beerus and Cell both with their hands still stretched out. Suddenly, Cell begins disintegrating, panicking as he rapidly tries to regenerate himself. But even when he regenerates, that just gets erased too. Cell slowly begins to be destroyed. But at the same time, purple energy radiates off of Beerus. Although, he doesn't panic. He slowly begins to fade away, just as Cell does. He accepts this demise, not resisting it. In a way, he feels he deserves this. Feeling some sort of regret. He was never one to take his position too seriously and all the events here are indirectly caused by him. Cell shrieks as he fades away, but Beerus doesn't. He only has enough time to say one thing. He looks over to the group, specifically towards Trunks. He says one word that he's never said before. Sorry. As Cell turns to dust, so does Beerus. Whis calmly watches on as he then becomes stationary. A deafening silence fills the area. And this is where we'll leave off for now. So, what did you guys think about this part? Clearly, there were some major consequences here extremely dire ones. How will this affect the next part and the series going forward? 
How do you think everyone will react, specifically Trunks? And what do you think future Bulma's role will be? Leave any thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like. And let's try to hit that like goal from the beginning of the video so we can get another part of this series. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon to get notified about any future parts of this what if, or any other videos that I upload on my channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.